Hello, everyone. We have another live stream right now. How are you guys doing? How is your day? How is everyone doing? Welcome to the live stream. And um, if you join, make sure you give the stream a chat. Hello, everyone. Are here? I welcome to the live stream. If you join, make sure you give the stream a thumbs up. Hello, Liz. Uh, how are you? We do have another live conversation for you guys today and a very, very interesting one. I do have a guest coming in and we are going to discuss a few things here and there. How are you, Liz? <laughs> Thank you so much for always being here. Yes, always on time, you know, notification gang. <laughs> How is Colorado? Um, I'm sure it's probably like morning hours where you are or yeah, how, how are you guys doing over there? How is everyone? So when you join the stream, I make sure I do give it a thumbs, let me know who is here and also let me know where you're joining in from. I would like to know and how is your morning as well? Oh, okay, you're just waking up. <laughs> Hello, guys. Uh, welcome to the live stream. If you're here, let me know who is here. I want to begin the stream in like two minutes. I don't want this to take long. We should do like just an hour and and we go do other things. We are going to talk about Africa, the differences between Africa and America. I do have King Obutunda awaiting. And we're just going to talk about like the culture, the mindset, the social differences, how we're doing business. Like that's what I want to know. Yep, sir. How are you? How is Carolina? Thank you so much for joining the stream. Hi, Benja. How are you? How is China? Thank you so much for joining. Make sure you do give the stream a thumbs up. And thank you so much, guys, for joining. <laughs> and Mr. King himself. Yes, he's here today, so he'll say hello. <laughs> yeah. Don't so stop. in about one minute, yeah. I'll just give like one more minute or half a minute. So we shall begin the chat. And I want this to be really quick. I don't want to take much of your time, guys. I'm also already tired. I barely slept yesterday. So who else I give the stream a thumbs up and let me know where you're joining from and let me know who is here. Benja, how is China? How is Carolina, Ayapsa. Uh, Benja, I probably think it's night in China right about now because you guys are way ahead of us in time. I'm sure it's about night time. And of course, I'll be ready with some questions if you want to know some things about the difference between Africa and America in terms of culture, the social experiences, the way of doing business. We are going to talk about it. King Obutunda is here and we're going to, he's going to give us his take because he has had a lot of experience in Uganda. Hi, Shalom, Nisima, how are you? Thank you so much for joining the stream. Okay, so uh, let's start the conversation. I think whoever comes will just join us along the way. Whoever is here, I thank you so much guys for joining. Let me add King Obutunda to the stream and we start the chat right about now. Hello. Hello, Tunda, how are you? I'm fine, Ray, how are you? I'm okay, thank you so much for sparing some time to join my live chat today. No, that's all good, it's no problem. Okay, so say hello to the viewers, and then of course introduce yourself, and then we start the conversation. All right, hello to everyone who is watching now, uh, live on Ray's channel. My name is King Obertunda. Um I'm here in Uganda. Uh, I have my own YouTube channel, and like Ray said earlier, we're going to talk about some of the differences that I've experienced uh, between here uh, living in Uganda in particular, excuse me, and uh, living in America. Okay, yes. Yeah. So, King Obutun, how long have you been here so far? Is it already like two years? I uh, saw you right like two years already. I was like, oh, that's yeah. a long time. <laughs> so, this is my first full year uh, living here in Uganda. Um, especially mm -hmm. here now, because I got here right before lockdown in uh, the end of January. So February, uh, this is the first official month of the new mm -hmm. year, basically. And um, uh, collectively, I've been here for about three years altogether, just off and on. But it's the only the only time I've been here for a full entire year. So my experiences have been uh, 
a little bit different this time around because now I'm actually here. I'm settled, so I haven't been, you know, doing a whole lot of moving around and stuff like that as far as going from country to country. Okay, uh, that's great. I mean, three years collectively, one year already as as a Ugandan <laughs> before you leave the country because we had COVID last year. So, I, I mean, I can imagine you have the real experience, so you should spill all the tea. Anyway, so let's dive right into the topic. So, okay. if we start with the culture, how have you mm. found the Ugandan culture from your interactions with people, from the way we behave? How would you compare uh, well, it? There are a lot of major culture. cultural differences. Um, so I was saying, yeah, there are a lot of major cultural differences that I've noticed uh, living here in Uganda. Uh, as far as like the culture, you guys, okay. So black Americans, like our, our culture is so much different. Um, you guys here, it's different experiencing uh, Ugandan culture because I grew up on uh, West African culture. So I don't want to compare it to what I grew up on, like, um, you know, growing around Ghanaians or Nigerians, basically. So Uganda is actually unique in its own way. Ugandans have their own unique way of doing things as well. And um, they, don't, they have their own pace of doing things as well, is what I also noticed. That um, this mm -hmm. place is, um, Kampala is a very fast paced city, but Uganda as a whole is kind of a, a slow country. I don't mean slow like in a bad way or a negative light or anything like that, but things do move a lot slower here compared to other African countries like Kenya, for example. If you look at Nairobi and other parts of Kenya, I mean, it kind of moves. From what I hear, it kind of moves a little bit faster. And then from what I know about West Africa, as far as Ghana and Nigeria, those are fast paced countries, you know, city, big cities and things like that are much more faster paced. So um, okay. here I got to experience uh, Western culture and I got to experience the uh, central culture. And uh, what I mean by that is that Uganda is very diverse, has many different tribes here. And although their tribes have similarities, their cultures are kind of, kind of different from what I've noticed. Um, as far as some things that they eat, uh, behaviors that they do, the way they do uh, traditional things with weddings, things of that nature, you know, there's a lot of diversity within the tribes here. So um, me spending time in the West, uh, in the Western region of Kabale, uh, that's the, the area that I was in, Lake Mignoni. Uh, spending time out there, I've seen a major cultural difference between, you know, here in Kampala and somewhere like uh, in a rural area like that, or smaller town, basically. And small town life is, um, different than big city life, basically, you know, things don't, things are much slower in a smaller town compared to how they are here. But it's like, um, I haven't been to any other major city other than, uh, I think I passed through Imbarara. So I haven't really been to Imbarara. So Jinja and Entebbe are like the, the major cities that I've been to other than Kampala. And, um, mm. from what I've seen, like they, it's like, once you leave outside of Kampala, things are a lot slower, in my, in my opinion. They don't, they don't, okay. things don't move as fast or things okay, don't happen. So as I, I, I want to uh, help us elaborate, you know, what mm -hmm. you mean by things are slow. Please uh, give us an example because you're not the first one to, to complain about Uganda being so slow and being so well, sluggish. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to throw it out there. I would like complaint. to, to elaborate like with an example or maybe like your experience, mm -hmm. something that you thought would take much shorter time, but maybe to drag down for a week or two weeks. Or someone told me about okay. something like um, that. Keep mm -hmm. Okay, well, what I could say was when I was in Jinja, um, as far as what I mean by slower is that uh, traffic is not as abundant as it would be in a city like Kampala, for example. Like, it was barely any traffic on the road. Um, there are parts of town in Jinja where uh, people do frequent more and cars are more heavy in those areas but for the most part you know everything is just kind of easy going it's like how it was how it was when i was in Tebe. um you don't see a whole lot of cars moving on the road you see a lot of people moving on the road things like that um i don't see the same kind of businesses that i would see in kampala that i would see in a town like ginger or a town like um in Tebe. like uh for example you don't see huge shopping malls with a whole bunch of people coming in and out of them uh they might have you know some shopping malls there but they're not that major compared to what you see you know, in Kampala, for example, it's just a smaller town. So, you know, that's what I mean by a small, uh, a slower pace. That's all. But like I said, so it's you not mean a in terms of development, right? Yeah, in terms of development and infrastructure, yes. And infrastructure. Yes, and infrastructure. 
Okay, so if I may complement your points, I do have a friend who is African American that moved to Uganda, and he, mm. he who was of the view. So his explanation of slow is actually a little bit different. Uh, for example, mm. people do not care so much about time. If you set a meeting for nine a.m., people find it very okay to come at nine thirty, even without notifying mm. you that they will be late. For example, mm. or they are sluggish. You know, they are not fast paced. And I would attribute that to the way we work in Uganda. So the payment mm. system in Uganda is salary based. It's not hourly based. So because they pay you at the end of the month for like an accumulated amount of time that you do, I believe that has an effect on why people are a little uh, bit slow. Like like they have a lot okay. of time to do things. Whereas if anyone knew that you're going to be paid per hour, meaning you have to finish a certain amount of work within an hour, and people would be more yeah. highly paced. So I believe yeah, that's a point. Yeah. But uh, let me see a comment from Liz. Liz uh, okay. says, that's right. I'm Ugandan living here in the USA. Everything is so fast paced. At first, it was hard for me. Yeah, so if you've grown up in Uganda, we are used to our slow paces, you know. <laughs> but I want to say this um, for those who really want to get like an idea of the, the pace of how town is, there's a mm. company called Emerging UG that does like these free walk tours around town. They do them in Jinja, Kampala, and in Tebe. So if any of you guys, you subscribers or anybody who's watching who haven't subscribed yet, you do plan on visiting Uganda, you guys can um, go on Instagram, even Facebook, I believe, and um, you can hit up Immersion UG. And uh, these guys, like I say, you can book a free walk tour with these guys and you can walk around town and get the feel of how town is exactly how I got it, basically. I even have a video on that on my YouTube channel, so if you guys mm. want to check that out, you can. Okay, so that was a little bit about the culture, that it's it's very slow paced. Yeah, of course we have, we are not as developed, we don't have the big, you know, huge roads and all that. So let's talk about the social bit of it. I know you do have so many friends in Uganda, but right now we're always about mm. enjoying yourself, having fun with the boys or whoever. Mm. So tell us about the social differences, your interactions, you know, is it easier to make friends? Is it easy to blend with people? Did you get any difficulties? Do you feel fully accepted? Is there like an invisible line, you know, between us and you that you still feel like people will still look at you like, mm, you know, he's not like really one of us like that, you know? So what social okay. differences have you experienced, you know? Uh, so I haven't really experienced any kind of like super negative things. Like for the most part, a lot of people see me out at a certain time, depending on how I dress, they might think I'm a celebrity. So they don't necessarily believe, like, I, I I don't hear any kind of bad things, basically. Usually what I hear from other people, if they say it in another language, other people will tell me, like, this person said this and this, and it's usually not anything bad. They usually mistake me for other celebrities or something like that. Like, there's a local celebrity I've mentioned many times. Uh, this guy's name's Navio. When I used to have my locks, I mean, I look just like this guy. So um, sometimes people see me around, they think I'm like a, a cousin or a brother to that, that celebrity. Or if they know who Ice Cube is, that's the first thing. You know, it's either Navio or Ice Cube nowadays. So I don't really get too many negative things. Um, as far as making friends go, I have two good friends, like people I can really, really call my friend. And I'm a little, uh, I'm different when it comes to that word friend. I don't call everybody my friend. I do associate with a lot of people, but not everybody is my actual friend. Not everybody, you know, is there for me, you know, dependable and vice versa. You know, people I can talk to, people I can trust, you know, honest. You know, those qualities, basically, of a true friend. So some people, if you do happen to see me out, um, I do associate my people with myself with certain people here and there. And um, I'm very careful of who I associate myself with because uh, in that same uh, breath of you making friends here, uh, you can also make certain associations with people where they could be a friend to you, but they're not a good person or they don't do good things. And you are basically uh, becoming guilty by association with this other person. So, you know, um, there's a lot to, you know, worry about, but it's also not a lot to worry about at the same time. It's just, I, I have to be very careful of who I uh, go around and who I call friends and things like that, because you can't be taken advantage of, uh, you know, because of that. You know, you, you associate with yourself with certain people, you decide you want to befriend certain people and, and you take on all of their problems and everything that's going on in their life, basically. So, you know, it's not a bad thing, but, you know, just I, I'm always careful about, you know, stuff like that. But making friends wasn't really, uh, issue here is just uh, I have trust issues. That's all it is. So I'm very cautious of who I, I go around. That's all it is. But for other people, 
who are very easygoing, who are not like me, who are not so, you know, paranoid or things like that, um, you probably make friends a lot easier, you know. Just be careful of people trying to take advantage of you, that's all. Okay, I do understand that if you're very extremely careful. So if you say you have two good friends, what qualities do you consider? Or what would you tell if someone is coming out here in Uganda for the first time? Because Ugandans, we are very friendly, very open. We want to hang out and talk to you or whatever. We pretty much make friends on a daily basis, you know? We we don't mm -hmm. think it with strictness, like the way I hear you talking about it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I associate people, I don't call everyone a friend, you know? We don't think of it like that, you know? We don't have, like, we don't think like that. So what... Yeah, what do you consider, you know, to be like, oh, I can be with a friend with this person? Is it like these strategies, like if they're going to help you with business, you know, if you think they are good at something that you may want to learn from them, like what are those few qualities that would attract you to want to be friends with someone out here? Well, I'll say like this. Whenever I make friends, I, I can say this. You, you are the company that you keep. And that's something that, you know, my family members told me, my mom you know, told me, you know, things like that. So I try, like I said, to be very cautious of the people I bring around. And the individuals that I would consider my friends are people that are like me in many ways. You know, I'm an honest person. I'm, I'm a trustworthy person. I'm a very helpful person. I'm a good friend to people. I'm there for people. Um, if you have issues, you know, I, I can be uh, physically there or morally there you know, or uh, mentally there with you, you know, things like that. Um, it, it doesn't always have to be for business. Because um, I have a friend of mine, we don't always talk about business things, but we do talk about things that encourage one another, you know, to just live life, you know, the fullest way. And he's a Rasta man. You've probably seen him in one of my, one or two of my videos here and there. But uh, we do talk about business often, you know, but it's not always about business. I don't find a friend specifically because we need to make money together or something like that. You know, uh, we, we do things together and uh, we, you know, go places, we spend time, but he's somebody that... I can trust and I can really lean on. You know what I'm saying? Because when there's there's times where I have issues here in uh, Kampala and I need like uh, maybe a translator or I need to understand why this person said this or did this or whatever the case may be, I can just you know go call him and talk to him. He can explain it to me in a way that I can understand it. Me being a foreigner, basically, because there's a lot of times that I've had a situation where I just don't understand why certain things happen the way that they happen. But he'll just explain to me basically. This is Ugandan. So that's that's you know the type of friends that I have around. Okay. <laughs> that's great. So I see you're very cautious. It's it's very interesting, you know, there is a lot of differences. And that will come to the mindset when you talk about the mindset, you know. The way yeah. I think it has I a lot to do I'm with the society, you know, our one main reason why. Uh, I apologize. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to cut stuff like that. But I will say one of the main reasons why I am very cautious is because I have befriended other people in the past and they have, through my me being naive, they have taken advantage of me, basically. So that's why I say now I have to throw that out there. I am very cautious. So people, it's not that I don't want to uh, hang out with certain people or I just don't call people back or I don't respond to messages or something like that. It's just not like that. You know, it's just always me being cautious, you know, you know that's all. Okay, uh, that's great. I mean, I, I I definitely do understand you, you know, I do understand you. So uh, let's talk about the language, you know, um, mm -hmm. and this can be a little bit about anything. How have you found okay. it, the way you talk and the way Ugandans here talk and how people express <laughs> themselves? I do know Americans, you're pretty much straightforward. If something is on your mind, you will say it out loud. Our culture doesn't raise us like that you don't openly yeah. say things like that it's just how we are we don't even like overreact or shout that much by the time you shout or beat someone or scream then it's really called for which is way different from the way you guys express yourselves so yeah, how you have guys you are really different. let's talk sure. about the language and and it's also part of socializing okay. as well actually because i feel like the All few right, americans so. i've interacted with you know Mm. Yeah, you guys like you're always like on an eight. If we are like on five, you guys are like on an eight, <laughs> like always a notch higher or two, you know, in ways of mm. expressing yourselves, you know, even when it's positive mm. or negative, we are more like mm. toned down, calm, you know, you don't overreact. 
to over yeah it's it's a culture thing that's how we are raised that's how we are brought up so how have you yeah, found likewise, that for us it's also a culture thing too you know we're we're some of us are taught to uh voice our opinions and and to speak up you know if something's not right you know you speak up and speak out you know you don't don't keep quiet on certain things because if if you don't you don't say something people are just going to keep doing it to you you know and also, we are also raised to treat people how we want to be treated. And me personally, I take that very personal. So when someone does something disrespectful to me or they do, they do something offensive to me, I often take it personally. And I don't intentionally take it personally, but it happens because, like I said, I try to treat people how I want to be treated, too. So uh, let's, let's go back to language. As far as language goes, um, Uganda is an English-speaking country. You guys do speak many different languages because every tribe has its own language here, uh, from what I understand. Uh, for the most part, mostly a lot of people that I've interacted with do speak a local language called Luganda. Um, I don't really speak Luganda, so I can't really speak on that portion, but I will talk about the English here in, in Uganda or East Africa, period. And I found that when I interacted with certain Kenyans, when they speak their English, it's much different than how Ugandans, well, not much different, but somewhat different than how Ugandans uh, speak their English. And Ugandans have a very interesting way of speaking English. And I'm not really sure why that is just yet, but um, I'm still trying to understand because you guys have some interesting ways of using certain words and certain phrases and, and things like, like that. Quite like, uh, actually, we, we, we even talked about that before. Like um, you guys are like heavily influenced by British culture. So a lot of things that you guys say is like from a, a colonial uh, colonial English basically. And uh, I'm not used to that because we don't have colonial English in America. So it's like um, a lot of stuff really throws me off, you know, but, and, and vice versa, a lot of things that I say to Ugandans, uh, sometimes my English really confuses people. My accent has gotten a lot better now because I'm more conscious of it. But uh, when I first came here, I'm from the south. Well, I'm from the south. All right, there's people probably from America who don't consider Virginia the south. But we ain't gonna talk about that. But it's past the Mason-Dixon line, so it's part of the south. But anyway, um, where I'm from, people have what's called like a southern accent or a country accent, and um, it used to be worse than what it is now. So certain words like still kind of come out, you know, a little southern. Like when I say here or or there or something like that, or beer, or it's certain words like that, you know. So um, when I first came here, a lot of people would really not understand what I'm saying. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I thought this was an English speaking country. Like, I don't understand why my English is so hard to understand. And it's because Ugandans have a unique way of speaking your own English. And when Ugandans speak to each other, like when Ugandans speak to another Ugandan, you speak your English, you guys understand it perfectly. When I'm standing there, sometimes I really don't understand what you guys are saying. Uh, it, and like I say, it's just because you guys use a, that colonial version of English. So some of the things you guys say, like when people used to say, like, I dress nicely, they'll say, uh, you're smart. And I'm thinking like, um, yeah, I read a lot of books, so of course I'm smart, you know. <laughs> I stayed in school and I graduated, so yeah. But so how over time, it took me a while to figure that out. Dress nicely. Huh? That's not smart. Huh? So smart is dress nicely, right? Because yeah, smart just, is... Yeah, like you're dressing nicely. But for us, we don't wow. we don't use like we just say you look good or you're sharp smart or something like that. Like, if you're dressed up nice, like man, you're sharp, you know, something like that. You're looking nice, you know, something of that nature. But when somebody says you're smart, that really throws me off. It, it, now I understand it, but back then I used to be like, what? No, yeah, no, smart. Give us another example because that's so funny. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> that's so funny. One yeah. more example. Another example is how you guys use by the way. Um, Ugandans will start an entire sentence by saying, by the way, and the way we use, by the way, it's like, um, if I, if I'm ending a sentence, but I want to, uh, I forgot to mention something to you and I'm just, I, I got to mention it to you real quick. I was like, Oh, by the way, um, such and such is down the road or something like that. You guys are like, by the way, I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I haven't seen you in a while either. <laughs> so <laughs> It's just an interesting way of how people, you know, use English. It's not bad. Uh, you know, I don't really consider it so incorrect or anything like that because I'm not going to say, like, every way I use English is correct. You know, I, I'm not an example of, of uh, a great English speaker. So I, I don't, I'm not picking on anyone. I don't want anybody to feel singled out. I don't want Ugandans to feel singled out because there's certain things that you, uh, Kenyans say that's kind of uh, a little weird to me, too. But we ain't going to get into that. We're talking about Ugandans. Okay, so one, I must say that Ugandans don't know 
can't tell if this is if it is the southern part of America or the east coast or the west coast. We don't know that. We just know this is an American accent. But the accent is also different because of our mother languages. English is our second language. So mm. my accent sounds mm. the way it does because of my mother language, you know, which is different. That's from, why I don't get upset. That's why I have a different accent. That's why the people in the north speak English differently. They have a different accent from mine. That's why the Kenyans have a huh, different it's accent. It's all influenced by our first languages, which is usually our mother mm. tongue. Yeah, but I think okay. it's a little bit funny because, yes, Uganda was colonized by Britain, so we do have, we said, I think we said British English, you know? So if we mm -hmm. say you're smart, we mean you you put yourself, your clothes nicely, you're dressed together. If we want to say someone is, like, upstairs smart, we might say he's clever. We just is like, the word mm -hmm. is clever, or oh, yeah, okay. yeah, it's like, he's clever, yeah. That's more like you're smart upstairs, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, let me ask you something else. How have you found mm -hmm. it with, like, using the cuss language? Because Americans, you, you do cuss a lot. You know, some be like, oh, that's my bitch. <laughs> 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 okay, like, so that's, that's actually like funny that you say that. Like, so, did she just, um, just say that? So how to experience with that? So that's, it's funny you say that because when I'm not on video, uh, where I'm from, uh, okay, in America, we have this thing that we say is called, like, you curse like a sailor. So when you say, like, a lot of curse words, like, that's the thing that people say, like, man, you curse like a sailor. So um, that's, I guess, is a cultural thing. Like, I, I don't know if it's an American thing or what. There are some Americans who don't curse who are really adamant about it, like, they don't curse at all. And that's fine. That's, that's up to them. Um, some people who claim it shows signs of immaturity or whatever. I don't it's, – it's language, you know. I, I honestly – I personally curse. I don't see nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to let ch children curse in front of me, you know, just like my mama did, you know, I still don't curse in front of my mom, but it's like, um, it, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a culture thing. It's the same thing. Like I don't intentionally, okay. If I'm abusing somebody, then yeah, I'll curse at you, you know, but for the most part, I don't just sit here and like every single word I say has to have a curse in it. But you know, when I'm, you know, so talking to, friends, you know, to that, that's what I'm interested in knowing. Oh, Your so, oh, so Ugandans, like, uh, yeah, Ugandans are sort of a funny way of reacting to it because you, a lot of Ugandans don't really curse a lot. Okay, so younger people don't really care, but older people, I find older people, some who are not more cultured, I guess, or not really, who don't really know much about other cultures, they do get offended by it. And then other people who are more used to foreigners don't really get offended by it, by it so much, but they will ask you like, man, why do you guys curse so much, you know? But I've had situations where people will get offended and will think that I'm cursing at them, basically. And they just don't understand the whole of English and how people use curse words, you know, when they're talking and stuff like that. So um, I remember one situation, I, I got off a boat and I hurt myself. So I, I said, like, son of a bitch, you know, and I, I didn't even think about it. You know, I was, I was just like, oh, shit, son of a bitch. And the guy, like, he thought I was abusing him. He was like, man, why are you abusing me? I'm like, I'm not abusing you. I'm not even talking to you. And he was like, the, the words you're using, the curses you're using, you're you're talking like that. Man, that's so bad. I said, man, I'm a grown man. I ain't nobody talking to you. But now I understand that, you know, it's just not uh, a lot of your culture to use that kind of language. And, you know, we, we me, where I'm from in, in Virginia, like my, my, my people, we got a potty mouth. Like we're, we got a really potty mouth, we got a foul mouth. So, you know, you hang around me, you definitely want to hear a few curse words. I try not to be so offensive. And if I find out it offends you, I, I don't try to purposely, purposely offend people, so I will, you know, tone it down a bit. But, you know, I'm not going to just stop because you don't like it, you know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, I must say that as Ugandans, we find it really weird when people throw a word around. We call them, like, big words like that. It's, like, so mm -hmm. weird. Like, ah, did he just say that? Like, you feel like, <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah, so it's not like that in our culture because... You can't just. I will talk say this too. Like it's, it's I also get frustrated sometimes because, like I said, in my culture, you know, when we get upset, we also curse a lot when we get upset too. So a lot of Ugandans don't always understand the words that I'm saying. And <laughs> I, have an interesting, I have an interesting language when I get upset. Like I can say some very interesting things to you. And if you don't understand it, it just takes away from the whole thing, you know? So it just makes me even more mad. I said one thing to this guy, like this Ugandan guy, he didn't understand nothing I said. He smiled at me. So that made it even even worse. Because he smiled at me. And I'm trying to express how upset I am. Yeah. He's like, 
Okay. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> So I can't do nothing and just walk away at that. So point. let's look at some. <laughs> so let's look at some comments from the viewers. Uh, Mr. Truth, thank you mm -hmm. so much for the super chat. I do appreciate. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, let's look at a few comments here. Um, as William says, there's a vast difference between Southern Americans and Northern Americans. Yeah, the accents are completely different. Way different eh? Okay. The further the further north thinking. you go, the word mm -hmm. I mean the, the further north and the further south you go is like the you'll see more of a, a drastic differences between those languages. Oh the, the accent, mm -hmm. excuse me. Okay, so the parts of America where you come from influences your accent, right? Yes, basically. Okay, so uh, Wale says, so who is going to talk about our African language? I don't know what he means by that, because, uh, I mean, in Africa, our languages come first, English comes second, so really that's about it, yeah. But I wanted yeah, to talk about- Yeah, I don't get upset the way uh, Ugandans speak English. It doesn't really bother me so much, because I realize that for a lot of people, it's their second language. I've met Ugandans yeah, where yeah. English is actually their first language, us, and they have a hard time language. speaking Ugandan. Mm. Yes. So <laughs> I always find it a little bit funny because I think, yeah, like the caste culture, it's just something that's, yeah, it's like in our culture, we are raised to, like, you can't do, first of all, you're not supposed to talk on top of your voice, you know, you're not supposed to, like, be high pitched, you know, especially if you're a lady. So that's how yeah. we are brought up how we are raised you know even when you're mad mm -hmm. you can't be screaming you can't be talking to people in a certain way let alone say a huge word like that so when you guys mm -hmm. like drop these words like like nothing would be like oh my <laughs> like it's just so weird for us you know we're not used to it like that so that's why, I that's why a lot of times i have to maintain my composure and i just don't get upset like i used to because it's no point yeah, because you might even say it and someone will fail to get away of reacting to it. You said you did something and the person laughed because you might not know how to react as you're like, you're like, wait, did they just say that? <laughs> anyway, so uh, maybe let's talk about, I don't know if how much business you've done, uh, what, the way of doing business here, is it the same like in the US? Uh, what's the difference uh, from experience uh, so or in their businesses? I haven't really done any major business here. Um, I've interacted with certain businesses. As far as like most, the most that I do here is just YouTube stuff and um, trying to get these uh, videos out there. You know, uh, representing other companies, like uh, doing a real estate business stuff like that. But right now, uh, what I'm working on is getting my proposal. I'm going to meet this gentleman tomorrow, and I'm uh, getting a proposal done so I can uh, present it to the Uganda Tourism Board. And uh, that's what I've been working on lately. Um, now, finding an individual who is able to help me do that has been a bit of a challenge because a lot of people I found can do a proposal, but it's not going to be a good one or a decent one. And that is something that people need to know when you come here to Uganda. That is something that Ugandans like. They like to have things written down in paper. Not saying that Westerners don't, but a lot of times when you go to pitch ideas to people or you go to talk to investors and things like that, a lot of times they want you to bring proposals with, with you. So you uh, you sit down, you go to like somewhere, have coffee or something, and it's very formal. It's, it's extremely formal here. And, I, and that's something that I do ha need to start getting used to because in the West, I mean, it really depends on the type of business that you're doing, but sometimes uh, doing a business meeting isn't always as formal. It can be very casual, you know, very laid back. You should, just two people having a conversation or groups of people having a conversation amongst themselves, basically. But here in Uganda, I mean, uh, briefcases and shaking hands and suit and ties and all that stuff and you guys really like to show out you know with with the whole being formal business so uh that's something like i said i really gotta uh, get used to and i gotta get in the habit of that now because uh one one guy i showed up to he got offended uh i showed up in jeans and, and a t-shirt with some sneakers on and i was just talking to him he's asking me for a proposal and all that stuff and i was telling him you know we're just you know having an initial conversation trying to uh see where we can go with certain things basically but like i said some guys are very formal about things and they don't 
understand Western culture, so they don't know that that's kind of how we are. And like I said, the, the individual, you got really offended by that, didn't even really want to have a conversation with his whole energy, his whole demeanor change. He thought I was disrespecting him. He felt like I was being immature. Like, it was really, like, too much. So that is something that I have noticed here. Like I said, um, I reiterate again, that people are very formal here with business. Yes, so I do agree with you. We are very formal, uh, especially if you have like a, an eight to five job. Most of the times you're required to dress a certain kind of way, especially even when you work in government offices, you have to be very, very formal. Like Monday and Tuesday, you have to be strictly formal. People will loosen up a little bit like on Friday, maybe wear jeans. But most of the times will be like a shirt, you know, a trouser. I don't know what you call mm -hmm. a trouser. Yet. Last time saying it's something else, or a tie, yes. you know, yes. suit. even when they don't work in a bank, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's a culture, it's a thing. That's how we dress, you know. Like when you yeah. go for a meeting and you're presenting a proposal, then you better be smart, you know. Your, uh, your shirt, you better have your shirt on and like fully dressed, you know, because that's how mm -hmm. people expect you to be, and that's that's when they will take you serious. So, if you definitely just show up in jeans and you just trust what you have, they'll judge you by your appearance. That's that's yeah. very true about Ugandan culture, yeah. <laughs> Can you hear this church music in my background? Yes, so I I, oh, I have that's a that's noisy funny. neighborhood, uh, that's my neighbors, they're making a lot of noise, so you'll just excuse oh, me. Okay. I, I, didn't you church, hear, guys. I didn't know you could hear yeah. this church, it's like a really big church over so here. I'm sorry, they're shouting. Uh, Nigel says, can you please influence the Ugandans to speak more American English instead of that good or full form of British English? <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. I, I can't influence anybody to do anything. I will say this, that Ugandans take up after who they like. So it, it's uh, it's not like uh, African-American culture is a present here. People listen to rap music here. They, they know about our, our, our stuff here. It's just, it's more or less uh, it's, it's how... It was colonization. I mean, it's like it's like black folk in America. We got we still do certain things that um, comes back from you know our enslavement times, and a lot of things we can't really shake, like the N word, for example. You know, so I can't really sit here and say that I or any any American can come here and influence all these people into uh, speaking a different type of English. Okay. So let me comment a little bit about this. So what a, a trousers, you guys call them pants, right? No, so pants, in my understanding, is underwear for men. Yeah, uh, no, underwear is underwear for men. <laughs> yeah, so in Uganda, if you say a pant, a pant yeah. means underwear for a man, from what I understand. And then yeah. trousers, what you call pants, you call them trousers. Mm. That's funny. Liz, thanks for helping me out here, you know. <laughs> Mr. Truth says, having plenty of money or marrying a local seems to be the only safe way to have a business, being a foreigner. Is that correct? What do you say about that? Uh, having plenty of money or marrying a local? Not necessarily. I mean, I, I'm a single man. I do business here. But it, it's plenty of single people who do business here. I, that's your relationship status shouldn't really dictate, you know, the, the business that you do. I, I, that's kind of confusing. But, uh, I mean, if you're going to do business, why not have plenty of money? You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> why struggle? <laughs> you know, you got to mm -hmm. dot all the my eyes and cross and T's. Why, why struggle? Yeah, have plenty of money, definitely. But, no, don't don't just say it like as if that's the only place. Uganda is the only place like that. There's, there's plenty of places around the world like that. But if you want to come here and be, be successful, it's just... I would just do a lot of investigating and I would definitely ask a lot of questions. Um, some people here have a habit of being vague about information. They don't like to tell you everything you need to know up front or in the beginning. And that's something that um, uh, Americans are going to have an issue with because we like to know all the details in the beginning. If I'm coming to meet you, I want to know every single thing I either need to bring or everything that we need to discuss when I get there or before I get there. Because I don't want to get there and we have half a conversation and we leave and I still have questions uh, unanswered. And I'm texting you trying to figure out, you know, stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I've had that experience many, many times here. Yeah, that's 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 true as well. Yeah. So you guys have a way different way of doing business than us. That's what I talked about. Uh, yeah, it's a culture thing. You know, it's we are just slow paced. 
Ugandans just sit and wait for their salaries at the end of the month. Mm. I would blame that question like an hourly system why you do you feel they don't have like that sort of pressure they are more chilled and laid back and so i think it's kind of frustrating for a foreigner whoever is here someone asks yeah, if you're going to speak yeah, Pigeon English. Mm -hmm. no uh ugandans don't really speak broken english they they kind of are are very if you speak english you speak english uh well okay in the ghetto they have a they don't, you know, they don't really speak too much English, but it's like, if they don't know English, they're going to just speak Luganda. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they don't they have don't a, a, a broken English. dialect. I've never really heard like a broken uh, English dialect here that I know of. It could be, but I've never heard it. I've been to a couple of ghettos around and if they don't know English, they just straight up Luganda. <laughs> Unless they have a, 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 a slang way of speaking Luganda. We call them draws. Yeah, we call them draws. Our underwear, we call them draws. <laughs> we don't have this word in our dictionary. I, I don't know what that is. I call it, I call it a pant, you know? <laughs> mm. So that's a little bit about the language. It's different, you know? <laughs> okay. It's so funny. Uh, do you think in Uganda it has to be money over everything? Uh, a lot of people have that um, mentality. Uh, Ugandans have a saying that uh, people are money-minded. Uh, I've heard that come out of Ugandans' mouth before, like money-minded, money-minded. So um, it, it kind of is present here. That That is a, a, a way of thinking, but that doesn't mean that everybody thinks that way. A lot of people are very generous and are not really don't really have a whole lot of money, but they have a lot of resources, things like that. I met a gentleman who has land. He has uh, he grows his own food, and uh, he has a small little house that he built. And uh, but he doesn't have a lot of money, you know. He doesn't have a lot of income, you know. But he's still surviving. And he's living very wealthy, wealthy in, in a way. But uh, like I say, that is that is kind of present, you know. Money over everything here, as far as infrastructure goes. I mean, that's extremely present, extremely. I mean, where I live, uh, the vice president lives. He has a house not too far from here. But if you look at the roads outside of his house, I mean, come on. <laughs> You know, if you go to America and you go see where the vice president lives, I doubt you see the roads look, you know, in that kind of condition. But not to compare apples to oranges, but I'm just saying, like, it's it's present, basically. Okay. So uh, let's talk about the mindset. What has been your, the way we think and the way you guys think, what has thrown you off, you know? <laughs> if you look at the mindset sure, of Uganda, time in general compared to the way you guys think what's throwing me um, off oh you can just um, give your general thoughts to the way that Ugandans think versus how Americans think um, Ugandans do have an interesting way of thinking and uh, I'm trying to think of a way to say it so that I'm not going to be offensive to anybody. I'm not trying to be offensive, but that is a very personal question. And um, from my understanding, there is, okay, there are classes here in Uganda and of course tribe tribes here in Uganda. Now there are low class, middle and upper class. And um, depending on the tribe, that could also determine your class here. Uh, from what I understand, this is my opinion from the outside looking in, it's not a fact. So um, from what I'm seeing, uh, I see that certain people might treat another individual a certain type of way based off of that person's class, whether he's a working class individual or was born into money, their family comes from money or something like that. Um, what tribe these individuals might come from, what clan these individuals might come from even. So, um, I find that a very interesting way of thinking because where I'm from, we don't, the only tribes that we know about were the ones that are wiped out by um, the colonial, uh, uh, the colonial Americans who first, the whites who first came to America to colonize and all that. And um, some, the, I do have uh, some Native American history in my uh, bloodline as well. And I don't know much about it. I just know that, that you know, some of my family do have those tribe things, but we don't, we can't we don't treat other people differently because of a tribe or something of that nature you know we black americans we face so much as it is just because of our skin color we can't even think about trying to treat somebody different because you were born to another clan or a tribe i mean 
you guys share the same skin color I do, so I don't I don't understand why you know a lot of people do think that way, and I even often get judged based on that. Um, sometimes I don't even have to tell people that I'm not a Ugandan, or I take that back. Sometimes I don't have to tell people that um, like I'm an American or something like that. They'll, they'll assume either that I'm an American, or if they don't know anything, they'll probably assume that I'm, if I don't if they don't hear my accent, they might assume I'm a Western Ugandan, and they might treat me a little differently because of that. Or if they know that I'm an American, they don't they know for sure that I'm American. They'll also treat me a little bit differently because of that. And that also goes back to the mindset of Ugandan here. So what I've understood and what I've been studying is that it's, it's a lot of it is really uh, this colonial stuff. You know, it's that came because of how you guys were colonized and how the British implemented uh, society here, basically. So a lot of what you guys do and your behavior is pretty much because of the, uh, the colonial things. Yeah, so I'll agree with you to some extent, and I'll give you an example. During the colonial days, the British turned, the, they used religion to to divide Ugandans. For example, mm -hmm. they turned the Catholics against the Protestants, and then mm -hmm. the Muslims were separate as well. So till mm -hmm. today in Uganda, there is that small little ingredient. Like for me, it's not because that's so ridiculous. That's just so stupid. Mm -hmm. I would never do that. But when you converse with older people, like the age of my mom or my grandmother, there's to be like, oh, that's a Catholic family, or that's an Anglican family, or those are Muslim family. Because yes. when I've heard that before. Days, yeah. We're from the and colonial you know, I days. I don't have religion, so when people like, find out I don't have religion, like, they really freak out. That yes, I didn't yeah. know that here. They use that <laughs> to divide really people. So... There is something that I could talk about, but it's a little bit political and I don't want to, but it has a lot mm -hmm. to do with what you just explained. I do agree that um, in Uganda, let me just call it like tribalism, you know, like it's still there. Some people, if you're not from their tribe, they might not even be your friends. And even mm -hmm. some Ugandans are specifically from their tribe, at least like 80% mm -hmm. of them are specifically from their tribe. Like specifically yes. they find a girl from their tribe. They'll tell you, no, yeah. we don't want to use our blood, you know, we don't want to do this, we are this, we are that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think it's just funny how Africans think they still need to find differences to divide ourselves because dividing ourselves can never be a solution until everyone looks at each other as one. But if you keep wanting to say, he's this, she's this, I'm from that tribe, the other family is wealthy, this tribe is like this, this tribe is like that. So I do agree with you that, unfortunately, we still do have that. And it starts from home, you know? It starts yeah. from home, starts from what the parents teach their kids. When you're three years old and your parents tell you, don't go to the neighbors, they are A, B, C, D. That's it, you oh, know? Okay. That, okay. You know? They tell you, uh, those people, they are like this. Even because as a child, you're innocent. It's until the mm. adults tell you certain things that, you support, that you're going to start to also have these borders and boundaries, you know, in your head. But okay. right from the beginning, they are not there. So just like you said, I think that's a very good observation for you as a foreigner. Yeah, but I also do agree with you. Sometimes, maybe this is everyone, not only Uganda, but the rich like to associate with the rich. And if you're not as rich, if you're not in that class, I do not exactly know if we have classes like how you've explained it. <laughs> But when it comes to tribes, I know some tribes feel like they are they're just special in their own ways. I do well, not okay. exactly what I mean by classes, classes as well is um, but maybe I could how you have like, people who come from working class families or who, people who tend to have jobs where there is more manual labor versus people who have like office type jobs or jobs inside of a bank. These people, there's a, there's a difference between them and their behaviors and how they associate themselves with other people, the things that they do, their lifestyle, and all of that, in my opinion, from what I've seen. I used to live next to uh, this one lady. She worked in a bank, and she was a bank teller. But she wouldn't really speak to me so, so much because of my, my tattoos and things like that. And she was, like, really, really, like, heavy into church. Now, I found out, you know, this lady, like, she comes from, like, a family... I don't really know the, the whole thing about the family, but she has like her last name is known around and uh, she comes like a family of uh, these important people around here. And uh, basically she doesn't associate herself with certain people. Like she considers like certain people less than her 
And she's the type of lady where she has like a maid. Uh, her her maid is, is she calls her maid her servant basically, and her maid uh, does a lot of manual labor for her, things like that. And then you know I, I know other people who don't live that kind of lifestyle, who don't have a maid, like they do everything themselves, they work for themselves, they come home, they clean, they cook for themselves, they do everything on their own, and their lifestyle is completely different as well from, like I said, the people who have money or come for money. Yes, so let me help you to understand something about Ugandans. When you talk about social class, what Ugandans tend to put to classify themselves according to their level of education. So a very good example is somebody who is like very well educated, you know, they have a big job, they have a master's degree. They want to pick out someone who never went to school. They won't pick out someone who never finished their secondary level education. They won't. They'll try to get okay. another person who is equally educated. Yes. So if this okay. lady works in a bank, she thinks she's she takes herself to be at a certain level. You know, she's educated. Maybe she has a good job. If she thinks that's a good job. But when you talk about tattoos, Ugandans do associate tattoos or be, having tattoos or being a raster, like having the long hair, especially if you're a man. They do associate it with the... Uh, music world a rastafarian culture which has like a negative thing to it it doesn't have to be negative it's not but in the mind of a ugandan when you look like a rasta when you have tattoos it's negative automatically they'll brand you as uh i do not know like the perfect word to use it like i know the local mm. word but the, like a, someone who is not serious with their lives let me just say it like that for lack of a word. like that kind of person so yeah. that that's it about Ugandans. If you have tattoos, if you are a rasta, you know, yeah. It's, if you're not educated, highly educated people like to associate with highly educated people. That's just how it is in Uganda. But mm -hmm. I want to read a little bit about the comments. And if you guys, if anyone wants to join the chat, I've dropped for you guys a link. As someone asks, do Ugandans eat shrimp? I've never uh, eaten shrimp in Uganda. I ate shrimp when I was out of Uganda. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say that. Restaurants. Where have you tested it? Yeah, that's, a, that's an imported uh, food right there. Like some certain yeah. seafoods, like crabs and, and shellfish. Uh, mm. Ugandans, a lot of Ugandans haven't really had that before. So I've even tried to find some of it around. And when I did find it, it's extremely expensive. So I ain't even yeah. tried it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, Sixth Rain. Thank you so much for joining the stream. So is tribalism in Uganda a violent issue? No, it's not violent. Or is it, a, is it only during election time? Tribalism is not violent. It's just like a silent thing. It's like a silent mm -hmm. thing that you always know exists, you know? They might not know it in your place. Sometimes when the wine people are so mad, they'll be like, oh, you guys, Westerners, we can't wait to throw you off, you know? You guys have taken over central Uganda. Like, they'll say those words. But for the most part, it's just silent, you know? Some yeah, in my opinion, I would like, say it's not, it's not violent at all. It's just a just, whole lot of haters out here. That's all it is, yeah. in my opinion. A whole lot of haters, y'all. Everybody <laughs> got something to say about somebody. They look for a reason. Yeah, that's, yeah. So someone says, in America, uh, being educated and broke, you are still labeled as being broke. <laughs> yeah. In Uganda. We call them a smart dummy. That's what what that's yeah. what they call you a smart dummy. Smart dummy. It means you, yeah, it means you, you got money and everything, but you, you just broke. You don't use your intelligence the way you're supposed to. Be. That's what we call them, a smart dummy. Yeah. So uh, that's I think that's about it. I don't know if you have any any more things to share, especially uh, about no, that's pretty the mindset. I think I so, you know, when it comes to Pardon? I said I think I pretty much that's pretty much it. Uh, does your subscribers anybody have anything in the comments? Any questions? <clears throat> no. If you guys don't have any questions, then I'll end this chat in like in like two minutes. Yeah, but that's hey, really about it. So, do you intend to keep staying here? Are you going to move back to America? You tell us, because it's already one Maybe. year, so. I mean, yeah, I'm living here now. I'm um, trying to, like I said, I'm trying to do this next uh, next portion of business uh, with the Uganda Tourism Board. So that's going to carry out for a couple of years. So, yeah, I'm here.
I don't plan on leaving. As long as nothing is detri- uh, like nothing happens physically to me to where I feel unsafe, then uh, I'm staying mm-hmm. for now. But uh, I do. I will say this: that um, I will stay or uh, stick around to do my business here in Uganda. But I am planning on traveling soon because um, Uganda is still going through uh, the curfew and everything. Well, we've been under curfew since last year. It has not lifted. Has not changed or adjusted at all. And the same thing with certain businesses being open. A lot of things have still, you know, closed down and the fun and excitement, you know, you can only go to restaurants and and eat out and all that stuff for so much and and sit around your house, I guess, for so much. A lot of time, a lot of things really still can't really do enjoy like concerts, for example, uh, going to uh, clubs during the day or 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 just social events, basically, during the day or even you. And I really don't even know what's going on with COVID as far as COVID cases uh, are concerned. Do you even know the current number of COVID cases here? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't even know they're even reporting that stuff. I don't even know they're reporting anymore. So that's what I mean. Yeah, I mean, there is curfew, but I feel like Ugandans are living their normal lives, to be honest. (laughs) Some are, but some aren't. You have some Ugandans who don't really party, who don't really go out, who don't really do much of that stuff anyway. But you know, Uganda is like a big partying country. Like Kampala is a, a party city, and to see how dry it is, and see people rushing home to get home by nine o'clock. I mean, come on, <laughs> that's that's kind of crazy to me. Yeah, that's true. Kampala is like uh, actually Ugandans have the highest. They have a record for being the highest drinking people in Africa. Like the, they drink the most, they yeah. party the most, they hang out the most. So the yes, capital, they have been you know, enjoying that kind of life, then uh, definitely they're missing out. Uh, those businesses were very, very much affected. But some people are still hanging out, from what I understand. I haven't, because I'm always home, <laughs> working and editing. I haven't, but I feel like... Yeah, I mean, you can hang out during the day. Those normal. things are cool, hanging out during the day. But it's like, uh, some people do like to hang out during the night, too, in the evening hours. And it's like... You can go to the same clubs or not club, but the same restaurants or the same uh, bars and stuff like that. And then because there's still a lot of bars are are, are still closed. A lot of uh, restaurants still closed too. Not a lot, but some, some. Okay, so I have one last question for you. Would you be interested mm-hmm. in getting the citizenship of Uganda? If everything goes back to normal, yeah, sure. That was my intentions in the first place. Okay. Okay, that's great. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. No problem. Uh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it as well. Yes, I do appreciate as well. Have a good day. Peace. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Um, Thank you so much, and uh, we shall see you on the next uh, live chat. Have a good day or good morning. Bye.